Hello everyone. My name is Stefan and I am Chief Product Owner uh, in the API platform for Deutsche Bank. And today I will walk you through how a, an internal developer portal is driving digital transformation at Deutsche Bank. Back in 2016, um, the bank has defined um, the goal to move from a more monolithic driven um, uh, landscape to a microservice driven landscape. Um, as you may know, financial institutes um, have uh, big monoliths back in the days, big monoliths with multiple features within this. And this is this can become quite complex to to maintain, right? So if you want to change one specific feature, uh, you have to regression test the whole thing. You have to release the whole thing. So turns out that you have much slower life cycle because you are much more careful. It takes much longer for you to have a release and then you have possibly releases only four times per year, for example. So what we do is we um, have assessed which features do we have, which features do we need as an organization to offer a financial um, uh, API landscape. And we defined our strategy to move to this microservice architecture, as you can see on the, on the right-hand side. So when you move there, we have now the different APIs and the different microservices talking to each other, communicating with each other, and every microservice can then be released at its own pace. So you can have a release for um, the yellow feature um, every month and for the green feature every two weeks and possibly for the blue feature every six months or whatever. Right, so this is the idea. And when we then started to deliver that, we have started to face problems. The adoption to this new architecture was slower than expected. Again, we had a, our KPI, how many features we wanna offer, how many microservices and APIs we wanna have, but the um, adoption was slow. And looking into this, what we have identified is that um, on the one hand, um, the organization was not ready. So we um, had to do, a, we need to have a long le learning curve with the organization to explain to everyone what is this API platform, um, what are these APIs, what is the benefit of it, etc. cetera. Also, um, we, although we had uh, an overview of the planned APIs, um, we didn't have the transparency to the organization. What is planned? What has been has been delivered already? What is a delta, right? Possibly in some PowerPoints, etc. But not, nothing, something that can be seen by everyone at any time. Also, in the beginning, um, the uh, management of the APIs was uh, very difficult. So we we had the idea to do everything through APIs. So we are managing your APIs using APIs. And for an organization that was not ready yet, you can imagine this was difficult. So um, we, we didn't have any UI or anything more user-friendly for people to use. And the software development life cycle was also too complex. As a financial institute, we have a bunch of regulatory uh, things that we have to comply with in order to bring things to production, the whole change process. Um, is highly regulated and um, with this API and this faster process, things were complicated. Um, and these were the, the issues that we were having at the beginning. So what we did, and this is possibly around 2018 uh, with the API platform team, we went to the drawing board and we started to analyze what can we do? What can we do to expedite, uh, to accelerate uh, this migration um, from the monolithic uh, architecture to a API-driven architecture? And the first thing we wanted to deliver is a compliant and UI-based uh, API deployment process. So we didn't want the users to use um, only APIs anymore. We wanted to offer them um, a UI, right? 
a UI where they can manage the API definition and define everything that is important for an API. We wanted to also um, offer a new UI where they can publish the API for discovery, right? So the API is possibly not ready yet, but it's already there for discovery. People can see that this is upcoming. And we wanted to offer something where they can deploy the API in a controlled way to test, to production, fulfilling all these regulatory requirements. So far, the idea, and um, as an API team, we um, didn't have much experience at that point with user interface. So in the beginning, uh, we as a platform team, we had to go through um, this whole learning curve of how do I design an intuitive user interface, looking into other solutions that are there, other solutions that are within the organization so that we can actually define a user interface that is intuitive for our stakeholders. Also, although it's a product that was good, was um, uh, improving the organization, we had to raise awareness. They were not all waiting for our new product. So we had to raise our awareness um, for this and um, make them aware that there's something there that they can use now. And of course, we need to get the buy-in from the stakeholders for the new SEOC process, talking to change management, talking to audit and everything to make sure that everything that we're doing in this possibly more straightforward way uh, is compliant with, with the regulators. Now with this done, we went to the next step. And um, so now the API provider can um, take their APIs and publish and deploy the APIs um, in a straightforward way. But what about uh, API discovery? So um, we, at that point, we had multiple UIs for API discovery. Um, and uh, first thing we wanted to do uh, is to consolidate this. It's a very bad user experience if you need uh, like a confluence page where you are describing with multiple links, you first go here, then you go there, then you go there, right? So we wanted to consolidate everything and build this within one flow only. And we wanted to give the users a full overview of the existing APIs. Right, so that everybody can see at any time within the organization, which APIs do we have? Now with this made easier, uh, we will also want to subscribe to APIs. Now everything there, everything is visible. So now I wanna click there and very quickly subscribe to this API so that I can start use. Um, and then what we have also realized is now suddenly the number of APIs and the, the transparency um, start to show up and uh, we have noticed that the APIs are not well categorized. So if you have now a huge number of APIs, um, you need to categorize them to make API discovery easier. Um, the API documentation um, was also not at that point, right? So. Um, it was not transparent before, so nobody was seeing this. And uh, the moment we make this transparent, we start to see, right? Um, so um, the open API specification possibly had to be improved for some APIs. And last but not least, um, with um, this, the, it was easy, right? You could subscribe to an API, not in production, but on a test environment, uh, you could subscribe to an API within five minutes, right? So now the API providers want to have more governance to this as well, so that they can control who is accessing the APIs and how and et cetera. So we needed to provide a um, governance um, flow uh, within, the, within the portal for, um, for API providers to, to, to have this, this whole management basically. And this is actually the moment um, where we have realized that we are actually in good process of having an internal API portal. You may have realized from the beginning, we didn't want to build a portal. We were addressing diff different challenges that we were having in the API strategy of the organization. And we came to a point where we, we have noticed, all right, we have already a nice UI that is being used by many people. Um, we can also add more features to it and make an actual API portal. 
And this is where we then start to define which features do we need. And we defined our own KPIs for our portal. How many users do we want to have? Which features do we want to have? And um, which features do we, um, do we need to offer as self-service? And how can we make a process simple, right? So we wanted that this whole journey um, is simple for everyone. And we revealed basically all the flows and tried to remove everything that was complicated or was manual and etc. And through this journey, what we have identified is that our stakeholders are not only engineers. Within our organization, we obviously have engineers consuming APIs, right? But there's a whole lot of other stakeholders using the platform. Before the engineer starts to subscribe and consume the APIs, you may have a business analyst um, that is looking into this, right? To understand um, which APIs are there that can be used for, for me to build my new product, right? Um, you have also the, the architects looking into this, defining the different APIs that they want for the organization, right? For the area of responsibility. And we have the CIOs also uh, managing everything through that portal. So um, the, the everything that we are building is not only for engineers, but for many other people with different skill sets. So the, the, the whole user experience needs to be kind of hybrid. It has to be kind of technical for, for the engineers and less technical for, for roles um, with, with a less technical scope. And as a result, um, what, we have ha what we have in the end and what we have today um, is an integrated internal API portal. What it means is you have a portal uh, with everything that you need to manage all your APIs across the organization. As an API provider, you can publish and you can deploy your APIs. As an API consumer, you can find the APIs and you can subscribe to them very quickly, right? And you can move your subscriptions to production. And this obviously also taking into consideration all the regulatory requirements that we have. You can also manage your API subscriptions. What does it mean is um, if your consumer is doing something wrong, you can block them at any time, right? Imagine your consumer went to production and is performing too many calls because there's an issue in their code, right? So you wanna protect your backend and uh, you may wanna block this consumer and talk to them and make sure this is fixed first before you can re-enable this. So you can manage a subscription uh, before going to production and even after going to production. And uh, we have analytics where you can analyze the usage of API. So you can see for every API, how many transactions it has, uh, possibly um, also at the time frame where the transactions are being performed. And you can also um, aggregate this by group, by CIO for the entire organization. And you can see for the entire organization how APIs are being used. So this is all integrated into one portal. And as an outcome, what we have um, is we have seen that over time, the portal has really accelerated the API adoption. Um, as you can see in this flow, uh, in this page, it has 4 x the number of APIs that we have uh, on the platform since we went live uh, with the portal uh, in 2019. And what we have noticed is that, or what was very important for us at any point in time is that we wanna offer um, uh, a portal that is good. We wanna treat the internal portal like an external marketplace and offer the users a five-star user experience, right? There are too many applications that offer a bad user experience. Maybe they are slow. Right? Maybe they are buggy. We, do, we didn't want to have that. It's really important for us that um, our internal users have a good experience and can go through everything that they have to do smoothly. And here are some key learnings um, from, from us during this journey. The first learning is that uh, digital transformation happens step by step. I have mentioned before, we didn't know exactly where we are going, right? We were defining the transformation. Well, we, we knew the overall goal. The overall goal is to do this APIization of the organization, right? Uh, how we are getting there, 
uh, is um, there are different ways. And we were defining this step by step. We were being able to react to this um, at any time when we were facing blockers or when our stakeholders were expecting something else. And we have also accepted our failures and have learned from it. There were failures in the process, as I have mentioned, there were challenges and we have learned from them. And based on this, we have made our product better. Um, so the product's not perfect from the beginning um, and we, we have to simply accept that. Um, one thing that um, is to be mentioned is the API quality. Um, I have mentioned the moment we have um, made everything transparent to the organization, we have seen that the categorization is not right and possibly the documentation to be improved, right? The moment the API is out there, it's very difficult to get these things out under control. And the more APIs you have, the more difficult it is for you to get this under control, right? So uh, you wanna take, uh, wanna take API quality and uh, categorization and everything into consideration right from the beginning. And you need to understand uh, and consider your user groups, right? APIs um, is not only for uh, engineers, at least not in our organization. If you build a portal that is very focused on engineering, uh, you're gonna lose all your other uh, user groups and you're gonna have a less uh, successful story. And last but not least, um, deliver uh, with quality and offer uh, your users a five-star user experience. That would be it from me today. Thank you very much and talk to you next time.